engineering fam. Actually, we're a little early today because I'm like, screw it. But hello, engineering fam, and welcome to another episode of Elevated. I'm your host, the Elevated Engineer. Uh, so give me a second. I want to do a quick little, as usual, sound check. Uh, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Ah. Okay, yeah, 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 so let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, recently, this came across across my desk. Um, it is a clip of Asian Crips. Yeah, I, I didn't know either, but why not? <laughs> so let's give me a second. I'm going to switch over, and we're going to... Make sure that we can hear. And... Boom. Oh, I want to give a big, you know, uh, thanks to, to, I got this from Rap Shack, but just go ahead and pay attention. China Mac, you know, been getting into it with this popular blogger named uh, Charleston White. And, you know, he's been saying a lot of racist things, you know, towards the Asian community and just, you know, things that are, you know, when it rubs so well. How the fuck they get a pass, nigga? And somebody do something to them bitches and within... One year of a president, these bitches got all kind of law enacted. One eight hundred nigga, baddest niggas been done in this country, homie, and they ain't never spoke one time for us. They they Chinese rappers can come over here and go nigga 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 nigga, and then when they get mad at us, they can also say fuck you nigga. We can't say fuck you goop. We don't even know how to speak their language to disrespect them. So they come take on our culture. China Mac, Johnny Dang, they get to be niggas, huh? And when the niggas say, no, nah, fuck you, Chinese boy, go rap in your language. Until y'all get some back, y'all been taking, nigga. Y'all don't even hire us. You yeah, know, uh, how y'all feel about that? You see that shit? That's some bullshit. The fuck that motherfucker Charles, man, whatever the fuck his name is. Like, he can't be like, stereotyping all, all of us. Motherfucker, you know what I mean? Come out here and fuck with him. Period. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck that nigga. I'm all the way with China Mac, man. You know what I mean? Shout out to bro. You know what I mean? Fuck that nigga. I'm all the way with China Mac. Okay. Keep going. Putting up for, for what he believe in. You know what I mean? It ain't even about the, the color, race. Fuck all that. You know what I mean? He putting up for what he believe in. And what he, uh, what he grew up on. You know what I mean? Like that nigga charged him white, right? I don't even know, bro, man. This nigga got a white shirt on with black prints saying white boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, man, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? He real Trump supporter. You know what I mean? Like, this nigga, oh, man. You got me started, man. Look, man, he ain't never been a foot yeah. a day in our circumference, man, in our trenches. You know what I mean? I don't know how he grew up. He ain't, I don't know how he grew up. You know what I mean? We grew up around niggas. We grew up around all type of niggas, all type of colors. And we, yeah. we, we all talk the same. You know what I mean? The whole fucking trenches out here talk the same. It's Northern Cali, nigga. This California, nigga. It's SAC, nigga. We all talk like this. Fuck wrong with you. We got brothers out here, nigga. That, 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 that man, come on, man. That nigga don't, get, don't get us fucked up, though, man. You know what I mean? Don't get us fucked up. Yeah, you touching Houston, nigga. Come touch SAC, nigga. Let us know, nigga. Come touch SAC, nigga. Do all that little work, nigga. All right, just... I'm glad the video cut off right there because I, I honestly can't take too much, too much of this shit. Just give, <laughs> give me a quick second, okay? Yeah. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and come out the gate and say, yeah, uh, I'm fucking with Charleston White. He is certainly correct. Um, despite his past. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and stand by him because uh, this is some bullshit. Um, at the end of the day, controversy sells. And to be honest, that's all you niggas really care about. We know it. I know it. They know it. But first of all, I promise you, these dudes would never talk to me like that. I promise you wouldn't. I'm not gang affiliated at all, but I promise you, I promise you. They would not address this college educated black man in that fashion. I could I could promise you. Right? So this is what y'all Crips doing now. I understand um well I don't really understand why this hasn't been addressed, but 
Hell, we wouldn't even let white people talk to us like that. So these Asian dudes are basically calling y'all soft. And by y'all, I mean dudes in that lifestyle. Now, I expect this from New York, a.k.a. the Takashi 6 9 type of crowd. And you can see what happened there. See, they don't talk about their own people like this. And I wish these dudes would even remotely think about talking about the Yakuza or Triad like this. First of all, let's 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 break this shit down. I mean, I used to live in Japan, bro, and, and I've been there a number of times. Um, I've encountered a a deal of of organized crime <laughs> uh, affiliates in my lifetime. I can assure you, I can tell the difference between these little street urchins and the yakuza. Okay, because let's say these dudes was talking crazy like that to some uh, Yakuza or Triad guys. Uh, and they seen that. Or even some even some a mob, Italian Mafia guys. At the end of the day, they would go home and their fire, entire families would be uh, uh, not existing anymore. And they, Because that's how they get down. That's how they get down in those, in those countries, in those, in those demographics. Uh, they don't let you disrespect uh, their people like that. Let some Irish guys be on camera um, talking about the Italian mafia, just blatantly, just like, just like with 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 zero respect with 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 anything about a whole population of people. I guarantee somebody will go see them. Now, I'm not saying that you know. I'm directing, you know, any crip niggas like that to go to go see these dudes. But I mean, is this what y'all doing? I mean, for real, for real. I mean, is this is this what we doing now? You know what I'm saying? Like this is just it's kind of a slap in the face because whether these these dudes realize it or not, the the crips, uh, bloods, all these gangs were uh created um, after the black power movement and the black panther uh, uh organizations because these organizations these these gangs existed to protect the community because unlike a lot of these other populations in the black community we obviously don't really get protection um from the criminal elements because we don't have, let's keep it real, police don't protect black neighborhoods for the most part. Majority black neighborhoods. Especially poor majority black neighborhoods. <laughs> so, I just think it's it's a little odd, you know. And I've seen the China Mac uh, interviews. I've seen, you know, I've even seen this guy say, yeah, yeah I don't... He purposely sold drugs. To the black community because he knew what it would do. What well, not just to the black community because we purposely sold them to the, to the white community too. But he purposely didn't sell them to his own community because he knew the damage that it would do. And uh, I remember seeing an interview a while ago when he had said that he was first getting into that life. His parents was like completely disowned him down there. Um, and didn't want to have any part of them because I, I guess that's how it is in their community. But Charleston, Charleston White is right. I mean, listen, the Asian population, you know, caught a little bit of hell for the last year. Like, <laughs> and they got a law passed that said anti-Asian, that's a, a anti-Asian Pacific Islander law passed unanimously through Congress for the most part, maybe a few, few votes dissent. Uh, but, Basically, that law essentially takes away the First Amendment rights because you can't say what you want. Now, should the Asians be a protected class? I, I guess, you know, sure, why not? But when, when black folks have to sit and listen to people who aren't, you know, whether they white or not, because like I said, we wouldn't let white folks talk about this, talk like this. But whether they're white enough, we have to sit and listen to these 
These types of people just sitting there. These niggas ass, you niggas, niggas. We all, you don't know where we from, bro. I know you live in America and you don't know what it's like to be a black man called a nigga. It ain't the same, bro. At all. Nigga, nigger, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it's all about the intent. It's all about, you know what I'm saying? So you can say whatever the fuck you want to black folks. From the top to the bottom. But as... Charleston uh, said, if you were to call them a, a racist Asian name, you know, you go get thrown in jail. But they can call us niggas and do everything. See, this is why the Kamala Harris of the world are far more dangerous. Uh, Joe Biden, this, I, I'm not even going to say Kamala Harris because she, she's a whole nother animal. But like the whole Joe Biden administration is more dangerous for black people. Uh, than Trump was, in my opinion. I think that, I think that it's actually quite scary what they are allowing black folks to be subjected to, and it's only been like six months. I said this on a previous uh, broadcast that I, up until the last six months, I I've never seen black folks really getting charged with hate crimes until now. <laughs> so. You know, you can you can say what you will, and you can say like, yeah, you know, he's he being me is I'm, you know, kind of gaining steam off a of controversy or, or whatever. But that's just, this is just I'm gonna come at it from a different point than a lot of people. Again, I've never been in a gang. I don't want to be in a gang. Actually, I have been in a gang. It was called the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> you know but other than that i've never i never wanted to be in the gang that's never been me and these guys have made like three four videos that i'm sure have gone viral talking about the same shit talking shit really about black folk and we just supposed to just sit there and take it because you know i guess that's what we do now so that being said next topic we go shift from some nigga shit to some Nerd shit. Now, been doing some more research, and I feel like the last couple of weeks I haven't really been talking about the uh, engineering aspects. This is called elevated engineering, so it's not elevated nigga shit. <laughs> but no, I um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna post a video uh when I re re upload tomorrow. I'll probably post it in the description or add it as a comment. Uh, but I've been watching a bunch of her videos. Her, her name is Sabine Hassan German. <laughs> not, not trying to be offensive, but um, I'm probably not gonna be able to pronounce her name. But she did a really good breakdown of the uh, of the uh, breaking of the uh, not breaking, but the trending topics in quantum computing and the leaders in and such. So this time I actually got down a bunch of notes. I'm going to be uh, going through them really quick um, because I just want us to be informed more of the quantum computing um, phenomenon that's happening. Okay, so the first one she goes through uh, is the superconducting qubits. This is like the most widely known qubits, right? Um, it, it works by small electron currents and is easily reproducible. Um the problem with the superconducting qubits is that they need to be super cool. They don't work at room temperature. So it costs a lot of money to be able to cool these qubits. Okay? Um, and they're highly susceptible to decoherence, which means they break apart uh, once they reach uh, their um, super state that you can observe. Um, and the super co uh, cooling is, you know, taken out, they'll fall apart really quick. So there's a couple of leading companies, the usual players, um, Google, IBM. So the next one, um, that interests me the most, um, cause it's a little bit what I'm studying and believe me, I'm not going to be super, super deep into this because I want you all to go watch a video and do the research itself. But these are the photonic Q, uh, Q bit or Q quantum computing 
Um, and it uses uh, photons or light signs. Truth be told, I hadn't even heard of photons until about, well, not photonic, uh, photons, but photonics, which is basically light science. Um, I hadn't even heard about it until maybe a year and a half or two ago when I was doing some research, right? But it basically um, uses light science to stabilize the qubits. It's actually very, very efficient at doing so. Now, a while ago, um, I spoke about the Chinese researchers that said they had obtained quantum su supremacy. Quantum supremacy, again, um, is basically the stabilization of qubits uh, being the most. I think Google is up to like maybe a thousand with their superconducting qubits. Um, but in order to achieve for quantum computing to be at the level where it can not only solve these problems that that classical computers can do but be also be useful and really break through is we need to get to about a million um so we're we're, we're not close but we're on our way we are on our way the good thing about photonic uh qubits is that they can be operated at room temperature which is very very ideal unlike the super cooled ones but you also need incredibly large systems to be able to run them and sustain them and of course they're less susceptible to decoherence uh, because they're using light and they're used in uh, room temperature now the next one she talks about is called ion traps and this one i'm not as familiar with but from what she really talks about it's basically qubits that are atom, atoms minus electron charges. So they're really small qubits <laughs> being uh, being traveled and stored in goddamn atoms, which is crazy. Okay. Um, these can also be operated at room temperature and they use lasers to manipulate the qubits, similar to photonics, right? But not the same. Uh, the biggest companies I seen was Honeywell. And obviously, because, again, they could be in room temperature, they are known for having better coherence uh, than superconducting qubits. Uh, but they're also slower, right? So here's the one most people know about. Um, this is the one that the conscious community, you're going to hear a lot more. And um these are the one this this okay so this is the d wave this is the one that people know when you think of a quantum computer you think of the d wave right so uh d wave is as far as i know is the only commercially available quantum computing out so you can actually buy a, a d wave but you're not gonna excuse me you're not gonna nearly get the the amount of of uh uses as let's say like google and ibm because um i think they only go up to a thousand at most qubits i gotta look look back into it but um d wave d wave is like d wave is is what you're going to encounter first when you start really looking up quantum computing um and then finally this one is called topological quantum computing which is like it's crazy okay so <laughs> this this how crazy this is and this is where the nerd juices start bubbling up and stuff right right the engineering nerd juices so check this out the info in a topological quantum computing hold on Drink this because my throat is crazy. Are stored in quasi particles. I don't even know what that shit means. <laughs> I'm an engineer, but ben, I, I okay. I, it's, it's not that I don't know what it means. It's, I'm still fuzzy on it, but it has almost no susceptibility to decoherence. So once it, it once it is observed um, and unobserved, it's not going to break apart. Because these particles, I mean, we're talking about stuff that's smaller than atoms here. You know what I mean? We're talking about information on computers 
that's being sent where the information is smaller than an atom. That's crazy. Now think about this, black folk. Because I also did a, a broadcast on a quantum internet some time ago. When I'm talking about the quantum internet, I'm talking about completely taking completely taking control of the internet out of the hands of a, of, of a couple large monster telecommunication companies like AT&T and Comcast, which is uh, so, so horrible. But... I mean, these <laughs> these are definitely still in the early researcher phase, but uh, Microsoft has said there's like almost no downside to this to this last form, the topological uh, quantum computing. But for the quantum internet, we're talking about sending terabytes of information that are smaller than a goddamn particle a qua it says a quasi particle not even a full particle <laughs> so a uh, full particle is pretty small right quasi particle is even smaller than that so what why am i saying this what i can easily you know talk about you know kwame brown more um i could easily get more into drama and all that stuff but to be truth be told i don't even like drama like that i Unfortunately, I have to talk about it because it's it's happening, you know. Um, but the Asian gay thing, a Asian gang thing, it, it's it's something that needs to be addressed. But this is the future, I believe. I believe quantum computing will replace classical computing. Um, I, I'm not going to give you a solid timeline because because. Is no real way to predict if it will replace a uh, classical computing. I'm just, classical computing is always going to be here, and classical computing being the zero one um, uh, basic languages, uh, uh, binary languages that we've been dealing with for the last hundred years, <laughs> probably more. But um, with that, yeah. So. The quantum, the quantum computing and quantum internet and quantum all this stuff. Um, I spoke about the metaverse a little while ago, which is basically a 3D internet um, that you live in. Uh, these things are gonna, these things are gonna show up when most people are looking this way, and just like when the internet came, you know, people were just like, oh yeah, that's interesting. So yeah, what's up with this uh, MTV or what this, what's up with TV? But you know, blah blah blah. Because to to most people, you know, does it work? Okay, does it make my life easier? All right, cool. Yeah. But it just creeps in. It creeps in. Like 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 what we says, mama's cooking. <laughs> he about to he about to patent that shit. But no, it just creeps in. These are the stuff black folks need to know. These are the technologies that black folks need to know because these are the technologies that are going to really change the world vr all this stuff the, the proliferation of there's only gonna be more data that's gonna grow so big data internet of things i can i can control half the half the lights and the my computer in my room from my phone I really can so that's that's the type of stuff that's gonna grow so this quantum stuff man this this is what we need to be studying. I, I really want people to come behind me, watch my video, and then maybe I'll spark a little interest and then like, okay, you know, <laughs> I want to do that. And then they built the, the, the next quantum internet. Let's not forget the internet was designed by two black engineers who rarely get the credit, if, if at all. So that's why I really wanted to focus on. Um, uh, so, moving on to the next topic, out of quantum computing and into the real world, of course, um, I haven't done a reality segment in a while, and I wanted to do one because, you know, it has some good things happen with my company. So, our studios, aka my company, 
Uh, we just completed our last round of hiring. And I believe we got some really, really high quality talent. But the truth is, I had to come to that realization that regardless, the mission must continue. Regardless of who I hire, right? So I learned that you can hire the, your people if you can, but at the end of the day, you got to go with your gut, you know? And that's and that's the truth about it. I mean, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like being in the military, where you know you, you you mess with people who are most like you, who's also cool, and who's also like about their shit. You know, they're serious about their business. So um, I got some man. I got some really. It can't. It, it got kind of crazy because I was I was. I was mulling over these two these two character designs. They're both really, really good. I'm just like, damn, I want one. I want one, right? So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to choose both of them. <laughs> so I know hiring two people instead of one. So <laughs> hopefully it works out well. But you know what? Fuck that. I want to talk about some shit, too. I tried to hire black people. I really did. Ended up getting like damn near 30 applications or applicants. Um, and I interviewed like six or seven because there were so many. It came to the point where I was getting so many applications. I only had it up for maybe a week or so. I was getting so many applications. I couldn't even check them on. You know, when you own your own business, you got to do everything, you know? So... I tried to hire black folks. I really did. But black folks, oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, I'm talking about, I had one girl ask me if this, like, I'm, I'm like, yo, interview going cool, blah, blah, blah. Just, oh, she asked me like, yo, so is this, is this a uh, volunteer or, or is this, is this like, you know, a, a, a job. And I'm just like, I look at her like, I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck did the ad say? Like, did it say that I was looking for volunteers? Basically, she was saying, are you going to pay me or not? <laughs> like, come on now. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Would you ask a white boy that if you was going to a job at McDonald's? Or oh, are y'all going to pay me? Yeah. Would you ask anybody that? If you apply to a job, does a job say, we look for volunteers, we're not going to pay you? Or does it say, we're hiring? Because that's what I put. I said, we're hiring. Right? Ridiculous. I had another chick, black, didn't even show up to the interview. I'm just like, it's crazy. Do you want the job? Like, I literally, I literally, this is what I did. I literally, literally held off on really good candidates and I let the black candidates uh I gave them like more priority right fuck that I'm black I'm a, I want to I want to employ black people but you know one chick I, I said I said send me your samples she didn't she didn't even have any samples it's just like, yo, like, all right, well, let me let me look at your portfolio. Our portfolio is like landscapes and shit. I, the ad says, pretty clear, you know, comic book character design or something similar. I would take like anime stylish uh, too. Like, I didn't I didn't say I wanted you know landscapes and and all this other shit. You know what I mean? I mentioned this last week too when one of the chicks sent me this some actually two no it was two send me to some like and they were both black send me some like gay porn type shit like but like animated it's like guys like making out and like no the guys big you can't tell if they're trannies or or, or if they're or if they're just guys it's like no bro like that's not what we doing man you know what i'm saying and bunny ears and shit and i'm just like yo black people like what are you doing, man? So I went with the I fuck that. I went with the I, I 
after the, after going through all that, I'm like, man, I'm going with the people who are the best for the job, who I rock with, who I know. Honestly, I hire people who are like myself, who are, they're going to put their best foot forward, ask good questions, show up on time, you know, the basics, and, 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 they, and they come there to work. It came to the point where, where the people I hired, we, we, we like bouncing the ideas off each other because it's like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. What about that? That's how we're supposed to work. It's supposed to be cohesive, man. So, yeah, that's that is the real realities of, of um, hiring in a black community. Now, you got to really deal with people. And believe me, this, the, the game I'm making is for black folk. Buy black folk, fubu on some on that shit. Like that's first thing I told uh every person who came in. I'm just like, yeah, this is uh the majority of characters are gonna be black. So you got a problem with all, all the white people interview. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, we, we have a meeting about it, and we'll do it. They don't, man, they don't give a shit as long as you pay them, and they get to you know get some, get some credit for it. Cool, cause I'm the same way. So. Man, black folk, we got to do better. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't forget, uh, like, share, subscribe, man. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, leave a comment. Of course, I'm going to be uploading this lo- ah, uploading this later. Um, I appreciate all the support I get. Salute to all the guys out there doing it, man. Um, I think we're at a good time to be black right now. Black media is growing. Oh, and a word to YouTube. We see what you're doing. You, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all this bullshit. We see what y'all doing. Y'all think y'all can't be replaced, YouTube engineer. Uh, Yeah, I think... That black folks ain't gonna figure out a way around y'all. And we will. Just know that. Know that we will figure this shit out. So. Don't think that you can use them Nazi tactics forever. Because we will go around your ass. YouTube. Okay. So. With that being said. This has been. Another episode of Elevated. <laughs> I'm the gracious host, Elevated Engineer. That's it. <laughs>